Hello, I'm Guy Messick with the law firm of Messick and Lauer and general counsel to NACUSO, the National Association of Credit Union Service Organizations. This is a discussion of the basic concepts of CUSO formation and organization. I sometimes call this presentation CUSO 101. Now, a CUSO is not a special type of business entity. It is a regular corporation, limited partnership, or limited liability company. It just so happens that a credit union is an investor or lender to the company. The credit union is able to be an investor or lender because a CUSO is engaging in permissible business activities and is primarily serving credit unions or members of affiliated credit unions. There is no maximum or minimum investment level that a credit union must have in a company in order for that company to be called a CUSO. Now, if the CUSO does not follow the regulations that make the credit union's investment permissible, NCUA will ask the credit union to bring the CUSO into compliance or divest itself of the CUSO investment. Some ask, can non-credit unions co-own CUSOs? And the answer is yes. Anyone can co-own a CUSO with a credit union except the directors and senior staff of the investing credit union. Any direct benefit from a CUSO is prohibited to these folks in order to avoid the temptation of making a decision regarding CUSOs that could benefit them personally. Some state chartered credit unions have different rules. Some states do not permit credit unions to invest with non-credit unions without the permission of the state regulator. Some states require that credit union owners have a controlling interest in CUSOs. What type of entity do credit unions choose for CUSOs? Well, the limited liability company is by far and away the most popular type of CUSO. A limited liability company has a lot of flexibility in how the CUSOs own, manage, and shares profits. There are also some significant tax advantages for a limited liability company. Are there limits on the amount a credit union can invest in CUSOs? Yes. A federally chartered credit union's CUSOs investments are limited to no more than approximately 1% of its asset size less reserves. That federally chartered credit union can also loan an additional 1% of its asset size less reserves. These limitations are in the aggregate for all CUSO investments and loans and will change on an annual basis as a credit union's assets grow or shrink. Some state chartered credit unions have different CUSO investment and lending limits. Now, NCUA also manages the risk to credit unions by requiring an investing credit union to obtain an attorney opinion at the time of the CUSO's formation. That states the CUSO is organized in a manner to limit the credit union's liability to its investment and or loan. You may wonder what the permitted services that a CUSO may offer. The NCUA provides a list of pre-approved services in Section 712.5 of NCUA regulations, which apply to CUSOs owned by federally chartered credit unions. Now, there's a wide selection of financial and operational services that a CUSO may provide. CUSOs owned by state chartered credit unions usually can provide the same services and, in some cases, may provide additional services. How do you determine? if the CUSO is primarily serving credit unions or members of affiliated credit unions? Well, there's no specific means of measurement given the wide variety of services CUSOs may offer. Credit unions usually compare the number of members and credit unions served versus non-members and non-credit unions served. Now, if the credit union related business is at least 51% of the CUSO's overall business, the credit union is in compliance with its CUSO investment. If the CUSO is out of compliance, NCUA has permitted a reasonable time to bring the CUSO into compliance before requiring divestiture of the credit union's investment. Who regulates CUSOs? Well, if the CUSO is a broker, dealer, or insurance agency, then of course the regulators of those types of services regulate the activity of the CUSO. You might be surprised to know that NCUA does not regulate CUSOs. Congress has not given NCUA the power to do so. However, NCUA has conditioned a credit union's power to invest in CUSOs on having an agreement between the credit union and the CUSO that provides NCUA access to review the CUSO's books and records. This right of review is to ensure that the CUSO is not creating an unacceptable risk 
to the investing credit unions and the client credit unions. How CUSAs prepare for these reviews is the subject of another presentation. I hope you found this presentation helpful. I invite you to view our other presentations. Thank you.